Till Peter Crouch salvaged a draw for Stoke City in the 90th minute. Perth Heat has won its fourth Australian Baseball League title after defeating Adelaide in Game 3 of the Grand Final Series. The Heat completed a remarkable late-season turnaround, beating Adelaide 12 runs to 5 to claim the Championship Series 2-1. And the Perth Heat have done it. They are the 2015 ABL Championships. The dynasty is alive. Yeah. Couldn't have done it with a better bunch of guys. Um, you know, I loved every minute of the season, so it was, yeah, it's good to get on the board early and get a good win. It was a bitter pill for Adelaide, which was looking to claim South Australia's first national title in 35 years. Heat catcher Alan de San Miguel was named most valuable player of the championship series. While men still make up the majority of sports fans, new research shows female fans are quickly catching up, though the profile of female athletes still lags behind sportsmen. Sports marketing research company Repucom has today released a report looking at women and sport worldwide and managing director Guy Port joins us in studio to discuss some of the key findings. Guy, welcome. Now, the report reveals that women are more interested than ever in sport, but how do the numbers compare to the number of male fans out there? Sure, thank you. I mean, it was an interesting report when we look at interest in women climbing, particularly amongst the younger generation of the under 30s compared to the older across the world. Still, though, when we look locally in Australia, we see that it's the male-dominated sports are still very male-heavy, the football such as the Aussie rules, the rugby leagues, etc. The two on the list that are really dominated by females, however, are tennis, which has always had a female skew, and likewise swimming. And that's been quite consistent here locally for a few years. So what about worldwide? Where are women's interests lying in professional sport? Yeah, I think at a global level it's still football. Uh, number one, not surprisingly, in a male sense, but also in a football, in a female sense. That's really the sport that's cutting through in the younger demographic. It's interesting to watch that change. It was gymnastics, if we were probably asking this question 30 years ago, and that started to translate to football. Now, there's something in the report called the Celebrity David Brown Index, which assesses marketability. Can you tell us a bit about that and what it's shown in relation to female athletes? Sure. So it's a Celebrity DBI Index, and, you know, there's a common question out there which is who's your most popular celebrity or who's your favourite sports athlete and we've tried to quantify that here in Australia and around the world. So we go and talk to what's representative of around one and a half billion sports fans and we ask them a series of questions. Not only who's the most popular and who has the most awareness but how do these celebrities score in attributes such as trust and endorsement. And so then who has been revealed as some of the top female athletes that in Australia, Australian fans like? Sure, so the female athletes in Australia had a very tennis feel to it. In fact, the two of them actually played just over a week ago in the women's final of the Australian Open. Number one ranked was actually Serena Williams and she was followed number two by Maria Sharapova. What's funny about those two facts is when you look at it at a global sense, they actually flip. So Maria Sharapova globally for us is seen as the most marketable female athlete and number two followed by Serena Williams. So that's just looking at the female athletes, but then when you can bring in male athletes into the mix, how do they compare overall in terms of popularity of female athletes worldwide using the celebrity DBI and popularity of male athletes? Sure, we sort of see when we break it down by gender that way, there are a few males near in the top ten list, so to speak, and those are guys like David Beckham or Michael Jordan. I think you could argue that those two athletes have both been retired for a few years now. They've gone beyond just the world of sport and they're almost in the world of Hollywood and high-level celebrity. So we see them there. In the female celebrity world, what's really interesting is when you take who the competition is, so I think Angelina Jolie ranked number one at the moment, followed by Julia Roberts, you take away their level of awareness and you look at the attribute factors, and that's where some of the sports athletes, such as locally Sam Stosa, really start to climb above the mainstream competitors. Now, something that the report concludes, it says that female sports competitions, athletes and fans present a really big opportunity for big business. There is still a of course, quite a disparity between issues of pay and sponsorship between men and women. So how can these athletes and these sports harness that momentum to translate it into greater equality? Yeah, look, there's still a big difference in the level of investment in Australia. We estimate around 7% of corporate funds or sponsorship dollars in the market is flowing towards women's sport. 
When we look at that 7% of dollars, it's also heavily linked to the level of media coverage that women's sports get, which is around 7% of TV news or live coverage. So I think media coverage and just being in the face of the consumer day to day is a key attribute here. We're starting to see that shift and the one me medium where that 7% rule doesn't hold is in the world of social and digital media. And you'll find that a lot of sports now that A, were limited by the avenues they had to get out to the public to show their coverage with the limited number of TV networks or print publications here. They can now start to deliver, deliver their own streams, create their audience and really do that in a cost-effective basis. Well, plenty of fascinating stuff there, Guy Port. Thank you very much for joining us and a lot to think over, Tony and Kim. Yeah, it's interesting, the social media factor yeah. in particular. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. It's time for the weather now and here is Graham Creed. We've got quite a few uh, thunder...